I've got a very highly requested video for you today on how I got fame in top physical shape for trail riding. And I will be sharing the components of conditioning that I paid attention to. We'll be talking about the data that I kept track of, um, sharing some tips and some things to be aware of, and kind of how I made sure that I was taking good care of him during this whole process. So prior to actually getting started on trail, fame was in really good shape just in the arena. He was getting ridden four or five times a week uh, for about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, walk, trot, canter, all of that was very comfortable for him. And I also did my due diligence checking in with my vet, uh, my trainer at the time, and particularly my farrier, just to make sure that his feet were in good condition for the trails in our area. Uh, and that's something I would recommend checking with your farrier in particular. Uh, your horse may need shoes or boots. There's a lot of options these days for trail riders that you might want to look into. We were spending four to eight hours in the saddle uh, some weeks, and that doesn't include, you know, trailering out and coming back and hosing him off and taking care of him and stuff like that. I don't think you have to spend that much time to get your horse in better shape on trail. I think what's really important is to think about what you can consistently commit to because consistency is probably going to be your best ally when it comes to getting your horse in better shape. I think it just kind of depends on your schedule and it depends on your horse. So depending on what the peak riding season is in your area, depending on your weather, you know, you may only be looking at being able to ride from, you know, May to November where you live. In which case, that's great. Take advantage of whatever is realistic for you guys to accomplish in that time frame with the idea that next season you'll probably be able to start off in a slightly better place. One thing that I am learning when it comes to horses' bodies is that it's not just about cardiovascular fitness. It's not just about building up muscle. You know, they have ligaments and tendons and bones and joints just like we do. And those can take time and seasons, years, to strengthen and develop to prevent injury. So it's not just kind of a, a one and done zero to 60 kind of process. It's a season over season process as well. So let's talk about the four components of conditioning that I paid attention to when I was getting fame and shape. Uh, the first one is distance. So whether you live in the United States or outside the United States, that's going to be either miles or kilometers. So the next component is duration, how long the rides actually take. And of course, this is a function not only of how many miles you travel, but how fast you're traveling on those miles, what type of elevation you have, etc. The other really big thing for my area in particular is elevation gain. So I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have a lot of hills. And so elevation can change pretty dramatically on a trail. And I would say it's pretty hard to find a trail less than a thousand feet of elevation gain. Now, depending on where you might live, that may be nothing to you. Or if you live in flatter areas with more rolling hills, that may seem like a lot. You may not be able to even find a trail in your area with that much elevation gain. So you just kind of have to work with what you have. And just to clarify, elevation gain is the accumulation of elevation that you travel. Um, it's not just the distance from sea level or wherever you start to the highest point. So for example, if you are doing a trail that has a couple of hills, and let's say you start it at zero and you go up 500 feet and then you go down the hill and then you go up another hill that's 500 feet and then you go back down to your trailer. That's a total of a thousand feet of elevation gain. So keeping these four factors in mind, I actually created a spreadsheet. Now, you don't have to be this nerdy to do this, um, but I did keep track of every ride that we did about how many miles it was, about how long it took us. Um, the elevation gain, which I'll explain a little bit later how I got all this data for each trail. But I would keep track of all of these things. And then each week I would set a target goal. And I would make sure that that target goal was only about 15 to 25 percent of an increase over last week's goal. And I did my best to try and only focus on one variable at a time or, ch or dramatically change one variable at a time. So here's some data from an actual week back in April of 2020 that we did. I was focused on distance at the time, committing to three rides a week. You can see the goal was 15 miles, and we hit 13.2 uh, miles, which I was proud of. So when it came time to set the goal for the following week, I did 25% uh, of that 13.2, so what we actually accomplished. Because that week was really easy for him, he seemed to enjoy it. I went to sort of that upper limit. When we were doing more aggressive rides with bigger hills, 
when we were doing um, short sprints of trotting or loping, I was more conservative doing maybe only like a 15% increase each week. So I was really paying close attention to distance and duration very early on, again, doing everything pretty much at a walk. And then I found, again, for my area, once we hit about an hour and a half or two hours, there really weren't trails that were sort of flat and kind of low and slow, easy trails. At that point, we had to really up our elevation gain. And that's when I started paying attention to doing more aggressive rides that were steeper that he was going to have to work a little bit harder at. And when we did that, and then I scaled back to trying to do as short of a loop as possible, given that the elevation had changed quite dramatically. But again, you really have to pay attention to how your horse is handling these things. You can't just say, oh, well, the data shows that we did this last week, so therefore we have to do this this week. I was always paying attention to how my horse was responding and trying to make sure that I was taking care of him throughout this whole process. So let's talk about what that looks like. Um, again, I'm not a vet, and I encourage you to have a conversation with your vet and with your farrier to find out what symptoms of dehydration or exhaustion might look like, how to kind of know when you've crossed a line with your horse. Heavy breathing is something that I pay close attention to. You know, it's normal for them to breathe hard when they're working hard, but there definitely comes a point as you ride your horse more where, you're, where you will figure out when they're working hard and when they're really kind of stressing themselves. And with fame in particular, I notice, you know, if he's really rapidly breathing hard, if that inhalation starts to sound a little more high pitched, that concerns me. And that's when I'm like, OK, let's let's take a rest. Let's stop. And along those lines, I always give him the opportunity to stop and rest. Anytime he's plowing uphill and he starts getting really winded and needs a break, he will let me know. He'll basically just stop and, and tell me that I need to rest a while. And I'm fine with that. And we will sit there sometimes for five minutes in the shade while he catches his breath. And he usually will let me know when he's ready to go again. He'll just start walking. Another thing that I pay close attention to on trail is how he's placing his feet, where he's choosing to walk. Um, this is this has to be kind of balanced with a horse's just natural intelligence about where to walk. Um, typically, horses aren't going to want to walk on the gravelly parts of the trail because they're slippery. Um, they may be mindful of the really, really dry grass or the really, really wet grass because those are also slippery. But, you know, if my horse is only wanting to walk on the soft shoulder and they're not willing to walk on just sort of the, the hard, regular parts of the trail, that could be a red flag for me. If my horse is tripping a lot or if my horse just seems to have sort of an ouchy kind of stride that is atypical from what I might experience in an arena, for example, you know, that could be a red flag that there's something going on with his feet that aren't comfortable. I'm also paying close attention to him the next day. So checking on him, a lot of times if horses have sore feet, they'll be kind of shifting their weight uncomfortably. Um, they may be kind of stiff. I do pull him out the next day and just kind of let him roll and relax and stretch himself and just kind of knowing your horse too, knowing what your horse typically does on their days off and how they act will help you gauge to see if they're maybe uncomfortable the next day. So another thing that I paid close attention to as I was getting fame conditioned is his feed because obviously his caloric needs are changing as he's working harder and exerting more energy each week. And I wanted to make sure he wasn't losing weight during that process. I wanted to make sure that he was well fueled for our rides and getting the calories that he needed. And I personally took some pictures um, from the side and the rear and the front of him just to get an idea of what his body looked like before we really started hitting the trails because I wanted to visually see like his muscle mass grow. He bulked up a lot in his shoulders, which I thought was interesting. Um, but also just to make sure that he was maintaining weight because, you know, when you're looking at your horse day after day, it can be easy to miss those very subtle changes in body composition. So it's good to have some kind of baseline, too. I will say that I did not push the intensity on trail rides and I did not push for long trail rides until Fame was drinking reliably away from home. It actually took several rides and riding with a buddy uh, for him to get comfortable drinking from the horse troughs on trail or drinking from water from my trailer after the ride. And that was something I was really paying close attention to. It actually took 
I want to say a couple of months of going out on these short hour, hour and a half rides uh, before he was comfortable just drinking from any trough. Now it's not a big deal, but that's definitely something that I'd be paying attention to if your horse is new to trail riding to make sure that they're drinking enough. And one of the things that I do supplement with after really long rides is electrolytes. You can get electrolytes in paste form, but I just sprinkle the powder over top of his hay pellets, which he gets the treat at the end. And it seems to work out just fine for us. I also pay really close attention to temperature. You know, I don't ride on super, super hot days. And in the summertime, we ride earlier in the day. Um, I do clip fame year round. So basically I shave sort of the excess hair so that he can cool off a lot faster. And that also is helpful in the cooler months as well because he's not getting put away still sweaty and wet when the temperature drops and the sun goes down. Now, you may be wondering where I am getting all of this data when it comes to uh, duration and elevation gain and distance and all that kind of stuff. I am using an app called All Trails. It's something that you can get on your smartphone, uh, but I actually use the desktop version the most to map out my trail rides. And what I do is I go onto the website and sometimes they will have pre-mapped trails in your area for the parks that you like. But a lot of times I find it easier just to create my own. And if you'd like a tutorial on that, let me know. I can make another short, quick video talking about how to use all trails. But the cool thing about it is just you can map out the loop that you're planning to do. And you can see throughout that whole loop how many miles you're doing, your total elevation gain. I will pay attention to the grade on a trail because I prefer to go up steep grades and go down less steep grades as opposed to the opposite. So I may invert the path that I'm planning to do, the loop I'm planning to do, so that I'm going up the really steep parts and down the more gradual parts. There are a lot of fitness apps on your watch or on your phone that you could just do a trail and turn it on and have it track your elevation and have it track your distance. That's another way to start keeping track of your data. Now, if you want to be like super, super hardcore about this, you can keep a spreadsheet you can do the all trails thing. You can even get a heart rate monitor for your horse. So yes, just like the straps that you wear when you work out, you can purchase a strap to put around your horse's chest that is connected to a watch that will keep track of your horse's heart rate throughout a ride. And you can save that data and keep track of it to track their cardiovascular fitness over time. Um, you can even be monitoring it in real time. So if you see that your heart, horse's heart rate is getting a little bit high, you can tone things down. Um, I purchased one of these before I got pregnant. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I do plan to do a review on it when I can. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye out for that video as well. If you have any other questions about how I conditioned fame for trail, let me know down in the comments below. I am always open to other video ideas or questions that you have. Again, leave me a comment, let me know. You can follow us on Instagram. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.